Xavier, what has this game meant to your career at the Naval Academy, all the experiences you've had? It's meant a lot. Um, you know, it's probably the biggest, well, definitely is the biggest um, event game I've ever played in my life. And I've had the, the opportunity um, to do it multiple times at the quarterback position. Um, and I'm just so grateful for it and for the opportunity to, you know, lead this team and play in the ultimately the greatest game uh, ever created. It's been quite a journey. I mean, your first start as a plebe at an empty stadium at the enemy's field, and now here in New England. It's, did you ever think anything could ever be like this over the course of your four years? Um, you know, I've always expected to play on the big stage. That's why I chose to come here and play ball. Um, because I always wanted to be in these moments. Um, you know, it didn't matter if I was 18 years old or 21 year old, 21 year old self now. Um, again, I'm super grateful for the moments. Um, you know, going back on it, I'm grateful for the wins and grateful for all the losses. Um, they've, they've, you know, they, they've sharpened my armor. Um, they've battle tested me every step of the way. And, you know, I feel more prepared now ever than, than ever um, to go attack this one. And what have you learned over the past three years that you think will help you the most this coming Saturday? Um, Just, you know, one play at a time. I mean, it's going to be slow sometimes in these games, having experience in these games. It takes a while for things to to break, for a play to break. Um, it could be stagnant um, or, as fans would say, boring to watch. Um but, you know, you just got to trust, trust and believe that things going to work out. You know what I mean? Keep hammering away, keep hammering away, um, and good things will eventually happen. Thanks a lot. Sir. Uh, let's go to um, Richard Thompson, Boston Herald. Thank you, Xavier. Rich Thompson, Boston Herald. Uh, when we were talking uh, with Coach Newberry back at Gillette Stadium, he said they were going to start going a little more multiple as you go on into the future. Are you kind of laying the groundwork for that that transition offense right now? Yeah, I think our offense is new. Um, it's new to to all of us who have um, really only been under center predominantly, um, running a, a specific type of offense. Um, but there's some there's some nuances and obviously some change that you could see. Um, and you know, I, I know a lot of people you know like to you know um, say negative things or you know compare stats, but it's the first year that a bunch of us are all running this offense. It's the first year that Coach Chestnut got to implement his offense to people that had to learn it for the first time. Um, and all these coaches on our staff that have been here have also had to learn how to teach in different ways. Um, so, you know, we've had a lot, we've had, you know, good amount of success with it. Um, and it's only going to get better from here. I know our, our coaching staff, you know, Coach Chestnut, and the guys that, that are coming back will we'll take care of that and keep moving forward with it. I know you came in kind of late into the season, but are you getting a chemistry with your receivers? and, you know, getting more comfortable with your progressions? Oh, definitely. I mean, I think uh, every snap you take just kind of adds to the, you know, the the bank of, you know, preparation and confidence um, in every snap. Um, so, you know, you can't fake reps. You can't fake repetitions and, and plays, and, and that stuff just builds confidence and carries over. So, you know, every practice, every game um, just helps build that confidence and connection with certain guys for sure. Okay, a Navy question. I was looking at your uh, service commitment. Ten of your teammates have Marine Corps ground along with yourself. Just a nutshell, what does that entail? Uh, Marine ground, you know, the people, the people on the ground, you know, doing hard things, sacrificing um, themselves um, on the front lines, being able to op the opportunity to lead people, which is, you know, the biggest thing that stood out to me in terms of, you know, Marine ground is the opportunity to lead, to lead others and have an influence on other people's lives. Um, that you might not be able to get in every single community right away. Um, you know, no discredit to any other communities. They do hard stuff and they sacrifice themselves um, just just as much. But there's an opportunity to step right in right away, um, be battle tested, do hard things, and then lead people. Um, it says a lot about those who you know decided and, and chose to put themselves put themselves up for the task. Thank you for your time, Xavier. Yes, sir. Wags. X, obviously, I mean, it's been really cool for you to to be in three Army Navy games. Well, four technically, but you you're going to be starting your third. But the memories aren't so great because of what's happened in 
freshman year was the goal line stand and you all didn't get the touchdown. Uh, sophomore year was the when they had the special package for you to run and you got hurt on the second play or whatever it was. And then last year, again, at the goal line, ready to win, and it didn't happen. So how, how eager are you to change the narrative? Yeah, I mean, it's been on my mind, you know, ever since the first one happened. Um, it's been, you know, you kind of chase – um the game just to erase that feeling um and it hasn't exactly gone the way that I've wanted to um but you know like I said earlier about the wins and even more so the losses um they've just they've built and and prepared me for for what's to come now you know what I mean the the hunger um, the, you know, the ups, the downs, they've all prepared me and battle tested me for what's to come now. And the only thing that I can do is look forward and do my best to erase this, uh, you know, for myself, but for more importantly, this program, um, and send this team, you know, off on the right note. All right, hold on. Strauss is in interjecting some, some controversy here. He says you scored in that plead game. Like, were, you want to give us your thoughts? Were, were you over the goal line or no? I, I would say I was, but I mean, clearly, clearly it doesn't matter at this point. I just make sure I leave no doubt this year. I was wondering, you know, I talked to you and Ty last week and I didn't get a chance to ask you this. What is your relationship with Ty? You guys have been battling for the starting quarterback for job for four years. Um, how do you guys get along? Me and Ty are best buds. Um, I think that's the coolest thing about it. Um We've been fighting for the same exact spot on the football field for four years. Um, but then, you know, no matter what it is, you know, you could find us walking together to every class. We're roommates for at, at every game. You know what I mean? Hanging out on the weekends, you know, hanging around the same people. Um, it's just it's just it's been a blessing uh, to compete with Ty. Um you know, he's a very sound, good football player, um, and he's, he's taught me, you know, some really big lessons, um, you know, because of his ability to perform well and practice and compete. Um, he's, you know, again, made me such a better human um, and, and given me so many opportunities to learn and grow um, because of his, you know, willingness and his, and his success. Um, but in terms of our relationship, me and him, me and him are best buds, real, real good friends. So there's, there's never any, um, you know, anything that, you know, comes between us um, on the field or off the field. He lets you play golf with him? <laughs> yeah, we actually, funny, we actually haven't played together, but we both do play a fair amount. So we're, we're oh, looking really? forward. Yeah, we're looking forward to. Uh, Your dad told me he played a lot of golf with you in the summer. Yeah, my dad, my dad golfs a lot. He He's, he's, he's up there probably like three times a week now. Um but yeah, so hopefully over the summer when sports is over, we can we can hit the links a little bit and relax. Well, so I mean, it's interesting because you and Ty could not be more different. I mean, in terms of size, in terms of style of play, and in terms of personality. I mean, you're more of a, like competitive, focused guy, and he's been described as really laid back, um, you know, casual type dude. Uh, it's, it's interesting that you guys get along so well because you're kind of like opposites in a lot of ways, aren't you? Yeah, well, you know what they say, opposites attract. So I guess I guess that's true here. Right, I'm good for now. Hey, Matt Hurst. X, you've had a chance, unlike a lot of people, to play this game in two different sports. Um, obviously, A means you're the ultimate competitor. You're trying to play two different Division One sports. But is this game any different in football than it is in lacrosse? And does one help you compete against Army uh, in the other at all? Yeah. Um, it's a good question. So I think obviously my situation is a little bit unique being that I experienced, um, I experienced both and I experienced football first in this game. Um, so the atmosphere, you know, it's just the sports are different. So it's really hard to compare the, the feeling of going out there and competing against them will always be the same. Um, but it's just always something different about football. And, you know, I remember in MetLife, it was like 88,000 people were at the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then for lacrosse this year, everyone was going crazy because it was like, I don't know, I could be wrong with the number, but maybe 12,000. And everyone was going insane because 12,000 people are going to be at the game. And 
you know, for guys that never experienced the football side of it, I mean, that's awesome. And it still is awesome. Um, but, you know, when you're playing in front of 88,000 people at an NFL stadium packed to the brim, you know, it's kind of, you know, hard to compare the two in terms, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just a different feel, but nothing to minimize away from that side of it. Um, you know, from the lacrosse side of it, it's still a huge game and opportunity, but just the opportunity to strap up against army in any sport uh, is a blessing. Is it because of the competitor in you that despite injuries that have tried to derail you uh, in both sports, quite frankly, at times, is it that inner drive as a competitor that just said, Hey, I, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep maximizing this and, and obviously playing both sports uh, for all four years. Cause it's, it's truly a, a Herculean task. I'm not sure people, you know, outside really understand what that takes to do what you've tried to do here at the Naval Academy. Yeah. I don't think people really do understand and that's okay. Um, you know, I don't do this for them, um, for them to understand. I do it because it's always been my dream to do it. Um, but it's been it's been tough. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, but you know, again, what was what was the original question? Because I don't want to get too off track. No, it. it I'm, I'm just saying the the fact that is it the competitor in you that yeah. allows you to keep going through all of this when you could have just said, "Hey, man, I can concentrate on one and, and be the best at that," because maybe playing two sports is challenging my body too much. I mean. Is it that competitor though that allows you to keep going and try to to finish this off with all four you know all four years? Yeah, definitely. It's been the way I was raised since I was a little kid. I've just been installed to be a warrior. I was raised as a warrior, um, whether it be you know being a young kid playing in the backyard and, and my dad let never letting me win anything. You know, what I mean, I've just always been in you know raised that way to keep fighting and never give up. I mean, that's not even an option. You know, quitting is not even a word. You know, in my vocabulary, it can't be. Um, not if you want anything, because, you know, the greatest things in life, you know, you got to work the hardest for. And I've always believed that and seen it through my parents' hard work, my sister's hard work. And um, it's just always something that's been installed, instilled in me. Um, it's something that I'll carry on for the rest of the life because it's not about sports necessarily. Right now it is, but that's a life lesson that I'll be able to take with me for the rest of my life. Um, so, but in terms of, you know, there's, there's times where I've been hurt and I'm like, you know, man, like this is some things aren't going the way I want them to. Is it should I just stick to one? Should I just focus on one? Um, people try to voice their opinion on what I should do. And, you know, I just kind of always remember, you know, where I came from, how much I've sacrificed to, to live out this dream. And, you know, what would I feel like if I didn't, you know, well, I, well, I have to live with that for the rest of my life. So uh, I'm glad I am. I'm glad for all the struggles, the good times, the bad. And just going to keep moving forward and keep building off it. Being an attackman and a quarterback require incredible footwork, but in completely different and unique ways. Uh, is, is there any way to compare and contrast being a, a quarterback and an attackman uh, between the two sports? I think definitely. I mean, obviously the footwork piece of it, um, and definitely the styles in which I play. Um you know, football, you know, in this offense, we do a lot of running in the quarterbacks. You got to be dynamic, quick, but to make people miss. And then being an attackman who's, you know, good at isolation and drawing slides and be able to get a step on the defender. Obviously, those go hand in hand. But I think the biggest thing is my position in, in lacrosse being, the, the uh, you know, playing X, they kind of call that the quarterback of the offense. You know, you got to be in full control. Um, it's not always about scoring the goal or, or or necessarily having an assist, scoring a point. It's about managing the game. You know what I mean? Being a point guard, getting the ball to the people, the right people's hands to make plays, understanding matchups, all that kind of stuff. And that goes right back into football. You know what I mean? Pre-snap reads, understanding matchups, who's covered where. Okay, where, where can we have the most success as an offensive unit? And those kind of play hand-in-hand hand to each other. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Sir. Uh, what a cost. Xavier, what's it like being on the yard as a member of a brigade, the brigade in this week leading up to the Navy game? Um, it's awesome. And as I grow older um, and I'm about to finish up my, my last year here, I start to appreciate those things more. Um, you know, when you're younger and you hear everyone running around past midnight, you know, doing all sorts of Army Navy pranks, you're kind of just annoyed. Like, come on, you know, grow up. You know what I mean? Um, you, but when you grow older, you start to cherish those moments more. 
um, and really understand what you're a part of. Um, and, you know, so unique, you know, you can't tell me, you know, at Alabama versus Auburn that, you know, they're having all sorts of pranks go on and people are hanging banners and running around. It's just a unique thing that I think, unless you really express gratitude towards it in every aspect, uh, you won't really appreciate. Um, but I've learned to really, really appreciate um, all the little things that go on here. And what does it mean for you to have every member of your company and almost everyone from the brigade there supporting you for the game? Yeah, it means a lot. You know, it really does. Um, these are some these are, you know, people you've done plebe summer with, gone through hard times with, you know, the same people that are, you know, you text, you know, uh, at nine o'clock at night before an exam that are saying, yeah, come over, I'll help you out. You know what I mean? You know, because they understand that, you know, we don't have as much time. Um, they know our time is limited. Um, so it's easy to say, you know, well, we just do it for us, blah, 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 blah. Um, and that is very true. Our, the main component, we, we do it for our, our team and our program, but um, it's awesome to have those people out there supporting us because there are a lot of people out there um, that really wish wish the best for us. So, Thanks. Good luck Saturday. Thank you, sir. That is definitely not another rivalry that has a group of students running the game ball 400 miles. That road. too. I, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Uh, Richard Thompson. I'm, I'm good, Scott. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, Wags. So, Xavier, what's going to be the key to winning this game? Consistent execution. Um, you know, we're not going to have many plays on offense for both sides of the ball. Um, and, you know, whoever can execute the best and take and make the fewest mistakes will win the game. It sounds cliche, but in this game, it's, it's very, you know, we got to take care of the football, which is number one. We can't give them any you know, short field or easy possessions. Um, and then when we get the opportunity to hit on plays, we got to hit them. Um, and we just got to be able to, you know, stay sane, stay calm and stay confident throughout the game, no matter what happens, whether we go three and out, you know, three possessions in a row or, or whatever the case may be, we have to understand that eventually it's going to break if we keep plugging the way. So I think all those things tied together will, you know, ensure our success. In a game where yards are hard to come by, any explosive play is huge, can change the field position, possibly set up points. You all have shown, be yourself and Alex Tesca and Eli Heidreich and others have shown you can break explosive plays. Uh, how crucial will it be to, and you've had some yourself in an Army Navy game as a freshman, and last year you did too. And in fact, I'm trying to remember on that one long run you had, wasn't, uh, didn't you get a, a, a penalty that wasn't called on that play? Uh, the the one last year, the tripping call. Yeah. 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 That, that definitely. How important are most of the plays if you can get them? They're so important. Um, and we definitely have enough playmakers on our team um, to help us out with that. And I think the coaches are doing a good job doing that. I think they can, we as players will come ready to play. You know, I think everyone will come ready to play. I know everyone will come ready to play, uh, especially for this game, for these stakes. So. Um, as long as we execute, every all eleven do their job in every play. I I have no, you know, no doubt that we'll have some explosive plays um, with the numerous amount of guys on our team that can make them. Thanks, thanks, sir. Pete Medhurst, finish us up. Xavier, how much better prepared are you this time around for this event, this game, at this position than you were back in that freshman season? light years i mean at the moment in every game you always feel like you're the most prepared that you possibly can be and ever will be um but you don't realize until you experience so many more things so many more reps so many more games of how how much potential there is um an ability to, to get more comfortable um so I, i'd say i feel extremely especially since freshman year um extremely more you know prepared and ready for the task uh than i did when i was a little, little boy when when you, you know, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, and you're telling kids, grandkids, neighbors, wherever you may be, about that first game that you played as a freshman, you know, what do you remember about it? And have you experienced anything in your athletic career? Because you've been playing sports, obviously, for a long time. Have you ever experienced anything in your athletic career quite like what that week was, those days were leading up to and obviously playing that game? Uh, in that environment where it was kind of eerie because, as you mentioned, I mean, it's 
there's not that many people there and you're used to seeing 70,000 for the army Navy game. Yeah. Um, I think as a freshman, the whole year was weird because of COVID and whatnot. So some things weren't the same, but I don't think I really understood and knew yet what I was getting into. Obviously I knew it was important. I knew Army Navy was important. That's been one of the biggest reasons I came here was because watching the 2019 Army Navy game. But in terms of the feel, I didn't really understand yet. Um, but then, you know, following years, I really, you know, got to understand it. Um, but there's no other feeling that I've experienced since then um, that, that this week and these weeks leading up to Army Navy give me. I mean, I'm sure there'll be things down the line in my life that'll bring me back to these moments. Maybe, maybe not. But this is a unique feeling that I haven't experienced anywhere else. And just to to capitalize on what you just said there, what was it about the, the 2019 game that you said, yeah, I, I got to be a part of this? Um, you know, obviously I just, I mean, it's just funny, the whole story. I'm a big Malcolm Perry fan. Me and, you know, me and Malcolm Perry are uh, pretty close now. Um, but you know, just being able to watch him and, you know, getting text messages, my parents were getting text messages about, you know, the way he was running and the offense that they were running over there at Navy kind of, you know, suited what I did in high school and my abilities. And ever since then, I've kind of been like, Hmm, you know, like in that moment, I was, I could see myself in that position. And just like that, a year later, I was committed there and literally exactly a year later, I was playing on in the game. Um, which was pretty cool. And it's 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 definitely I give a lot of credit to that 2019 team uh, and that Army-Navy performance and Malcolm Perry um, for, for getting me here. Uh, uh, finally, the, the task may not ask you to run for 300 yards. Uh, it may not ask you to do some of those things. But what would it mean to do anything remotely close to that as long as it obviously uh, helps make sure your team sings second uh, on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, as look, I, as long as we win, sing second, you know, I'll rush for negative 100 yards, and I'll be happy. That's that's I, I want to win this football game no matter no matter what. Uh, obviously, I truly believe that if all 11 do their job in every single play, uh, we're in the right play, um, and we execute. I feel like the stats, the stats, and the accolades, all that stuff will take care of itself. Um, you know, I have no doubt about that. Uh, but uh, but I'm. Um, um, to do what Malcolm did in that game, um, you know, that's that's a freak thing. And he's a, he's a heck of a player. Um, obviously, it would be awesome. But like I said, um, that's not even close to where my mindset is. I'm just trying to win this game and put my team in the best position to win. Coach, what's been the point of emphasis this week in these final few practices leading up to the Army-Navy game? Well, obviously, continuing to work on making sure that we understand all the pe all the pieces, all the intricacies of the plan, uh, making sure that you know uh, everybody is is going to the right people, but more importantly, um, doing things with correct fundamentals, and then also you know making sure that while we're focused, I think every young man in our program, every every person involved, you know, with the Naval Academy understands the 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 importance of this game, um, but also we're not going to play our best if we're tight. And so, you know, pressing and things like that, you know, we, you know, we talk all the time, um, you know, Coach Newberry talks all the time about it being a, a, BFE, a BFE game, you know, breathe, focus, explode, you know, and, and making sure that we're in the right mindset uh, to go out and do the things that we know we need to. This game is going to come down to three or four plays. It does every year, um, you know, and so being in that moment, being in each singular moment, uh, you know, each play of the game so that we can do our best uh, and, and maximize ourselves. How have you liked the reaction to your message in practice? Yeah, it was good. You know, we talked about that, made a big point about that. I thought, um, you know, I thought that it, it definitely made an impact uh, compared to Monday. Monday, we seemed a little tight. We had the ESPN uh, cameras out there and uh, the guys, you could kind of tell they were very aware of that. And uh, so I thought yesterday was better. Uh, we're, we're piping in crowd noise which was a great wrinkle yesterday. And, and uh, you know, so I think all of those things are, are falling into place for us as we're building towards Saturday to be able to go out and, and, and play our best football and, and, and get after Army. Have you had experience, do you think, in the, the actual loudness of the volume that you're expecting to get in Foxborough? Well, yeah, you know, 
having played, I played obviously in big games, coached in some games. Uh, the loudest stadium that I've ever been in uh, was University of Montana because you're in the you're in the uh, in the Rockies. It's all concrete, and that and and that's to say this: I've played in the Orange Bowl against Miami when Warren Sapp and Ray Lewis were playing, and I can assure you, down in that horseshoe of the Orange Bowl, you had to look into the football. It was loud, and that was when they were rolling. I played in the swamp uh, in 96 when they won the national championship. It was loud there, but the funny thing is Montana's the loudest I've ever been, and they were they were all very inebriated too, so that made it that much more fun. But, um, you know, so, you know, those loud environments, you know, of course we played at Georgia Tech last year, uh, uh, one year in front of a big crowd. Um, I'm kind of obviously insulated up where I'm at, you know, um, you know, so, you know, but I know our kids, it's critically important that we give them every opportunity to understand. And, and a lot of our guys, obviously, who have played in this game, they know how loud it's going to be. And, and that's part of the energy that you feed off of. Right. Thanks. Yes, sir. Have you heard how high the coach's box is at uh, Delat? You're on the moon. <laughs> how high is that? I lost you there for a second. What'd you say? You're on the moon. Oh, really? Okay. Well, we'll have a good vantage point. We can see the whole field. <laughs> the highest coach's box I've ever seen. <laughs> Flags. Bring your binoculars, Grant. <laughs> Will do. You know, so I was thinking back to uh, Paul Johnson's first year at Navy. You know, he stalled a new offense. It was new to the guys. He probably didn't really have the personnel he wanted at the time, and it was a struggle. But then all of a sudden in the Army-Navy game, it all came together. A season's worth of of learning and progress came together. They scored 58 mm -hmm. points, played out of their minds. And yeah. you saw, and I remember distinctly PJ saying that they expect to see this. This is what this is what we've been pointing to it all year. Good. Yeah. How excited would you be to see it all come together yeah. in this game? <laughs> Obviously, incredibly excited. You know, that's the goal and that's that's the hope. You know what I mean? And and uh and and I feel really good. I mean, our guys are incredibly obviously as you would expect they're locked in um you know I, I think that this would be obviously the perfect moment for everything to come together um I tell you what's been incredibly encouraging to me throughout the season and I just had one of these conversations about an hour ago um is is the conversations I'm having with our guys and and, and where their heads are and what they feel about things um, it has really put a lot of wind in my sails, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, so I'm really thankful and indebted to those guys for, for, you know, being willing to, to open up and, and communicate with me. And so, you know, obviously to answer your question, that, that would be, uh, wonderful to see everything come together. Uh, I, I, I know that we're capable of it. Uh, I know that these guys are more than capable of going out there and, and doing just that on Saturday. How much confidence do you have with a quarterback who started two Army Navy games? Um, he's got the experience. He went in there to Mikey Stadium as a freshman and played uh, pretty well, as for considering the circumstances. He he was there last year, you know, about to lead Navy into a victory uh, on the goal line. So, how much confidence do you have that Xavier has been in this game and is not afraid of this moment? Total confidence, you know. And and to your points, that's exactly why. You know, he's been in these big games. He understands the stage that he's on. Um, and, you know, I know that he'll have great poise and, and go out there and, and, and play really well. So excited uh, to see him out there and, and excited to have Ty back and healthy with it being his senior year as well. Well, I was just going to ask about that. How's Ty look if if he had to play on Saturday? Do you feel he's, he's ready? Yes, we do. We feel like Ty is ready. You know, we're, we're trying to be obviously uh, intelligent in, in, in his reps and how we're managing him to make sure we don't re-aggravate uh, his calf. But, uh, yes, I absolutely feel that way. So in a game in which yards are hard to come by and it's, you know, there's a lot of three and outs, a lot of punting, uh, how good do you feel about the fact that you, you've got guys who've shown they're capable of explosive plays? Xavier, Alex Tesca, Eli, others have shown they can break a long run because that it flips the field. It gives you scoring opportunities. Big plays in a game like this are just huge. No, no question. And, and – those are the three or four plays that determine the outcome of the game, right? And so, obviously, having those guys that that you know can go make those those big plays uh, is a big part of of the excitement that we all feel going into the game, you know, and the expectation that they're going to do just that. 
So based off what you're seeing in practice, you feel good that they're going to put a great effort out there, the offense? Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Ah, uh, Wyckoff. I know in a perfect world, all your offensive linemen would be totally healthy and, and rested going into the game. Realistically, how do you feel right now about how they've been coming up in these two weeks leading up to the Army Navy game? Yeah, I do. I mean, it's, you know, having a week off, obviously, um, it helps you, you know what I mean, from that standpoint. Uh, as you guys know, because we've talked at length about it, uh, some of those issues, they're not going away. They're going to have to play through them, you know. Um, you know, we've had really good practices. Um, you know, I was telling the guys the other day, um, as far as steps and angles uh, and, and tracks, you know, which is so important to offensive line play, um, you know, we came out of Saturday and it, they were as on point as they've been all year. So that's encouraging. You know, obviously, guys, steps, angles and tracks, that's that's offensive line play. Obviously, you got to have, you know, pad level and physicality to move people, all those things. Um, so, you know, there's definitely some encouraging signs through these last two weeks. And what's impressed you the most about the Army defense, especially in these last few weeks when they've had success? Well, you know, obviously they're going to be well coached and they're going to be disciplined. Um, you know, they, they've got key players uh, at, at all three levels, you know, that are good football players for them. Um, and then, you know, through the years, having been familiar with, you know, there's a, a, a tree of defensive coaches. Uh, that kind of all came out of Wofford. Um, and and Nate is one of those guys. And, you know, what you've seen is the evolution of their package over the years. You know, um, several years back when we were playing these guys, you know, you could really kind of predetermine what defensive look you were going to get by certain formations and things like that. And, and that's really not the case anymore with these guys. He mixes things up. Um, very similar and, and different, but some very, you know, some similarities to our defense and, and some of the things that they're doing, but definitely not as predictable a defense as they once were. Thank you. Yep. Wags. So what, you went against Nate Woody at, uh, when you were at Georgia Southern and he was at Wofford? Yeah, but definitely as a player. And then, you know, his, I would call him disciples, the guys that, you know, Coach there, we played Georgia State back in 2018. Um, you know, these are all guys that, you know, they they come from that same family tree, so to speak. What about the wide receiver position? You took some hits in the uh, SMU game. Do you feel you're going to be back to strength at, uh, on Saturday? Uh, yes. Well, we're going to, you know, got Jay. We have Jay back. Uh, we have Kent. Uh, Kamari is still in question. Um, so, you know, we, we've helped ourselves. You know, our guys, you know, getting healthy has definitely helped. Um, you know, we're still not back full, um, so to speak, as far as, you know, having everybody available, but we're definitely better off than we were coming out at SMU. Trick plays. Um, I don't know that you've called a whole bunch of them this year. Um, yeah. Reverse, whatnot, other, you know, is that something you pull out in this game? Without yeah, absolutely. No question. You got to have a few. We've got more than a few, actually. So, you know, we got to let it fly. What uh, I mean is, is that just because of the over pursuit that happens in this game? You can take advantage of that. Yeah, you know, guys are playing fast and, and aggressive, and it does give you an opportunity to to do some things like that. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, you, how excited are you for this? I mean, first Army Navy game, you're gonna be calling plays like Scott said from high atop Gillette Stadium. Um, I mean, I know you've been through a lot as a coach, but this is going to be a unique, unique moment yeah. in your own career. I'm incredibly excited, you know, and, and, and incredibly honored just to be a part. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things about coming to the, to the Naval Academy to coach. You know, one of the main things is the opportunity to coach in this football game, in my opinion, the greatest college football game every year. You know, um, Army Navy to me is, is bigger than the national championship game, um, you know, because of what it means to the people involved. And, and who those individuals are. It is, there's no question that it is the, the greatest college football game. Uh, and to be a part of that is incredibly uh, humbling. And, 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 and I mean, a, a true honor. So I'm incredibly excited and ready to go. So this is a little bit uh, kind of off the topic, but uh, Navy football Twitter account posted today that Eli Heidenreich is a finalist for the fullback of the year award. How, how, do you have any idea how that happened? Well, he's had a great year, you know. I mean, he's had he's had really moments that are really spectacular, right? Long runs, 
critical moments in games and uh or excuse me um you said eli right not alex, yeah, alex. <laughs> is it alex or eli it's, it's Eli. Eli. It's and it's fullback. Pardon, yeah, it's pardon my take podcast. It's it's not even a real award. Oh, I, got I was you. A well, let me backtrack because I just was not listening well enough. Sure, yeah, you I just I was talking about Alex. Alex. So Eli, yeah, that's a little bit of a surprise. He's not a, he's not a fullback, so he's a slot. So I could understand Alex. Obviously, I was you know talking to that, <laughs> but right. um, maybe but yeah, Eli. That, that's that's interesting. Uh, kind of hurts a little bit of their credibility, I would think. <laughs> I was gonna say maybe Strauss can call pardon the take or whatever they're called and let them know that Alex would be a great candidate for that yeah. award. They may have just got them mixed up. You know, they're from the same high school and yeah, kind of, kind of twins in a little bit of a way. <laughs> All right, thanks, Coach. Appreciate yep. you. Yep. Yes, sir. If I remember right in your introductory press conference, you mentioned your wife and daughter, the dot two daughters, that their number one thing was the Army Navy game when you were offered the job. Yeah, that everyone in our family, Strauss, is incredibly excited. Um, I spent a lot of money on tickets. <laughs> um, you know, there, there, there's going to be a, a large contingent of family and friends. And, uh, man, what, a, what an incredible, you know, opportunity. I'm, you know, I just can't wait.